Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll share 10 tips to optimize your queries in Power BI. I hope you enjoy this content and don't forget to leave a like if you find this useful. Let's dive in. The first tip is to filter early and do the most heavy operations last. The sooner you can get data out of your model, the better. This goes for basically every data source, and it's usually the first query that we would write to avoid loading data that we don't need. Second, placing the more advanced operations last, make sure that your model isn't doing heavy calculations on tables that you might remove or change afterwards. This will help minimize the amount of time you spend waiting for the preview to render each time you add a new step to your query. Our second tip is quite similar, and that is don't load data to the model when you don't need it. If you have a lot of tables and you're only using a couple in your visuals, don't load the other ones, but take a gradual approach of loading some tables, then create the relationships, build some visuals, and when you need more data, then start loading more tables into your model. Loading all your data at once will only increase the model size and negatively impact performance. Third on our list is to give your query steps a name. So this is actually more important than it seems. By documenting what you're doing, you make sure that you or other people can easily debug the query or add additional steps in a structured way. Simply do so by inserting a step and write the activity that is being done below that query. In this case, I've created two ID columns by combining different columns and I made sure to specify what those queries are for. This might sound like a lot of work at first, but I promise you it will pay off when you have a large number of queries. The fourth tip on our list is use the right connectivity mode for your model. Well, it's import or direct query or some other uh, import mode, but um, it's important to realize what you're doing here. Import mode is a standard and should be used when possible as it offers the best report performance while direct query mode can be used if up to the minute data is desired but this might negatively impact performance. So just keep in mind on the connectivity mode that you're applying. Number 5 is query folding. Query folding is when you write queries that are being executed directly on your source data before truly loading the data into your model. Your queries will support folding when you hover over your query and or your query step and the option view native query is enabled instead of grayed out. The sixth uh, one on our list is to be consistent in your naming. Make sure that you identify what are the ID columns and just be consistent with naming across different tables. So, renaming columns at the beginning or at the end of your query steps uh, make sure that you don't run into errors and ideally do it in power query over power bi desktop as this is just more readable overall the seventh one uh, the seventh tip that we have in our video is to turn off the detect relationships automatically function if you have two tables with common fields between them Power BI will likely automatically create a relationship between the two tables when you load the data into Power BI. We find that this is something that for most people they likely want to manage themselves as faulty relationships can display incorrect information in your visuals. Eighth one on our list is to use the correct data type. It's crucial that you always work with the correct data types for your columns. When working with structured data sources, such as databases, the data type information will be brought from the table schema found in the database. But for unstructured data sources, such as text, text or CSV files, it's important that you set the correct data type for the columns coming from that data source. Otherwise, you might not be able to perform the measure you want in a later stage. Ninth one on our list. Um, is to be careful with joining or merging tables. So make sure that you join tables correctly and that you aren't adding any new rows to the table. 
A full outer merge, for example, will actually add rows to your table. So just in general, make sure that you are aware of the implications of your query steps. Last tip that we have is to use folders to group tables. Like documenting your work as discussed in the third tip, another way of keeping your data model structured is the grouping of the tables in different folders. To start, you want to keep, you want to keep the dimension tables and fact tables separated and you might also want to create a folder for queries that you're currently not using as well as a folder for your parameters. So, that was it for our tips when using Power Query. I hope you found this content useful and don't forget to check out our other videos on the channel. Bye bye!